Bolts subjected to axial loading usually fail at the fillet under the head or at the first thread engaged with the nut. The fillet is a clear stress concentration, both for static or dynamic loading, and just like we studied a couple of videos ago when we were looking at stress equations for power screws, link below, the first engaged thread will carry most of the load. During the previous main video, link below, we developed expressions to estimate the fastener stiffness and the member stiffness. We stated that the goal for doing this was being able to identify how much of the preload or any external load would affect the bolt, and how much of it would affect the members. If we know how much of an external load actually goes into the fastener or bolt, we could develop some relationships to identify factors of safety for the fastener itself. In this video, we will do exactly that. We will talk about the bolt pretension that we refer to as the preload, and we will talk about any external tension load that arises from the specific application and operation of the parts that are being joined together by the fastener. In the video after this one, we will develop some equations that will allow us to estimate factors of safety under different definitions for what a factor of safety means. When a nut of a bolted joint is in contact with the members, but is not yet tightened to introduce a preload, the members and the bolt's clamped section, or grip, can be modeled as springs in parallel. As mentioned in a previous video, as the nut is twisted to tighten the grip, the bolt will be subjected to tension as the members are compressed. This is what is known as the pretension or preload. During this preload, the deflection of the members and the deflection of the bolt is not the same. Since the force going into the bolt is a reaction of the force created by the resistance of the members, even if they're both deforming, the forces are the same, Fi. Therefore, the deflection of the bolt is the preload over the stiffness of the bolt, and the deflection of the members is the preload over the stiffness of the members, which are clearly not the same if their stiffness values are not the same. Once preloaded, the structural component, which is made up by the members and the bolt, will start operation, and again, it can be static or dynamic. This can introduce an external tensile load P that affects the members, rather than affecting directly the bolt. The load will elongate the bolt even further by delta delta B at the same time it elongates the members in amount delta delta M, since they're both in contact with each other at all times. By contrast, in this case, the delta displacements will in fact be the same with delta delta B being equal to delta delta M. Again, because of the external load is indirectly stretching the bolt, will elongate the grip, which is everything between the nut and the head of the bolt, and everything inside it with it, in this case the members. This is where the springs in parallel simile comes into play. The external load P is affecting both the members and the bolt, causing them to deform the same amount, where part of P goes to the bolt and part of P goes to the members a different P for each, so that each one of them with a different stiffness still elongates the same amount. Solving for PM will give us KM over KB times PB, and since PB plus PM is P, PM is also P minus PB. Substituting the green equation in the purple equation, and solving for PB, we get an expression that allows us to calculate the part of the external load that goes into the bolt, PB which is sometimes written as C times P, where C is called the stiffness constant of the joint. Substituting this CP in the green equation would give us an expression for PM, an expression to calculate the part of the external load that goes into the members. Therefore, the total load that goes into the bolt is the fraction of the external load PB plus the preload Fi, and the total load that goes into the members is the fraction of the external load PM minus the preload, Fi, as the preload was originally compressing the members and the external tensile load is stretching them, which means opposite signs. This whole process can be summarized graphically by looking at the deflections in the x-axis of a Cartesian plane and at the force on the y-axis. When the nut is tightened, causing a preload Fi, the bolt is stretched by delta B. The higher the preload, the higher the deflection, and we know it's a linear relationship. We know that that relationship between the force and the deflection is given by the ratio between the two and is equal to the bolt stiffness constant Kb. And notice that the deflection is positive because the bolt is being subjected to tension. At the same time, this preload Fi is compressing the members. This means that for the same value of F, Fi, the members are deflected by delta M, and this value is negative because it's compression. The slope will most likely be a distinct one, since the stiffness of the members can be, but will very rarely be, the same as the stiffness of the bolt. 
As the external load is introduced, the compression of the members is reduced because they are effectively being stretched by this external load and the elongation of the bolt is increased again because the external load is stretching them both. And since they're both connected, they're both stretched by the same amount. To get there, it means that the bolt was subjected to the fraction of the external load that goes into the bolt PB and that the members were subjected to the fraction of the external load that goes into the members PM. The total external load would be equal to the sum of the two. With this, we know that the total force that goes into the bolt FB will therefore be FI plus PV and that the total force that goes into the members FM will be FI minus PM, which is what we stated earlier. Finding the preload is a very easy process if we comprehend how the torque and the force are related in threaded members. Remember the power screws equations we derived a couple of videos ago? Link below. As I mentioned then, they don't only apply for power screws applications. Since the interaction between the threads of both of the threaded members are the same, for example an actual bolt and nut, the relationship is still true, with F being the force of the preload Fi. Assembly instructions, both that you've followed to assemble devices you've had experience with, and those that you will write when designing components that are joined by non-permanent joints like these, will often include indications in terms of either fractions of a turn or number of turns after the initial contact between the nut and the member, or a specified torque, which you can achieve with a torque wrench or a torque screwdriver, which would literally stop when they reach the desired torque that you've set it to. The collar diameter DC will take the form of the average diameter between the inner and the outer diameter of the nut. As the collar friction in this case is really the friction between the nut and the members, regardless of if the members include a washer or not. The outer diameter of what we call the washer face of the nut, that small protrusion ring of nuts, is usually 1.5 times the nominal diameter, which is the inner diameter. For this reason, DC will almost always be 1.25D. If the assembly instructions indicate the torque you're supposed to use, solving for the preload is pretty straightforward. If the number of turns on the screw or the nut is what is being indicated in the assembly instructions, the process is slightly different. You can check how to find the preload value Fi for a given number of turns or fractions of a turn in one of the links in the description below. By substituting DC and rearranging terms, and by referring to the term in the brackets as the torque coefficient capital K, the torque is equal to K times what a very simplistic torque calculation would be, Fi times D. This is sometimes useful because for conservative estimates, you can often find torque coefficients K for surface finishes or surface treatments like sink plated, lubricated, anti zs etc. Saving you the extra long calculations for specific friction coefficients. Let's assume a large ceiling fan, like those you would see at some gyms, is being bolted to a steel beam on the ceiling. We are using four 1 4th inch 20 grade 8 bolts, and we already calculated that the bolt stiffness of each bolt is 3 mega pounds per inch, and that the member stiffness, including the steel plate, ceiling fan base, and two washers, is 12 mega pounds per inch. These values would just be obtained following the procedure we covered during the last video. Link below. If we know that the fan's weight causes each ball to be subjected to 30% of the maximum axial load that they would be able to resist, what is the maximum torque you would suggest using to tighten the nuts of each bolt so that the total load in them will not exceed the maximum allowable axial load? We know we can use the power screw equations for nuts and bolts to relate the axial load and the torque. So what we're really interested in finding is the preload Fi. We know that the fraction of the external load that goes into the bolt and not the members, PV, added together with the preload, Fi, is the total tension inside the bolt and this value shouldn't exceed the maximum allowable tension. We're being told that the fraction of the external load that goes into the bolts is already generating 30% of that maximum allowable tension. Therefore, the preload can only be the other 70%. From what we did today, I also know that the fraction of the external load that goes into the bolt, PV, is equal to the stiffness constant of the joint times P, or KB over KB plus KM times P. 
Since the total weight of the ceiling fan is being split into four bolts, I know that the external load of each bolt will be 0.25 kips, which means that PV is equal to 50 pounds. If PV is equal to 50, the maximum allowable tension is 166 pounds and the preload would not be able to exceed 116 pounds. And this is really all we need, because the preload will be directly related to the torque that I advise in my assembly instructions. If I look up a quarter inch 20 grade A hex screw to use as a bolt and a compatible nut, I can find all the variables I'm missing from this equation. But since we've done that before, and the focus of this video was finding the fraction of an external load that goes into the bolt, the total tension within a bolt, and the relationship between the preload Fi and the tightening torque, we've basically solved the problem by finding the preload. To see other example situations where you are either given a torque or a number of nut turns to find the preload, or given the preload to find the torque that you should recommend for the assembly of the system you're designing, together with the needed calculations for bolt tension loads, similar to this one, make sure to check out the links in the description below. In the next video, we will develop some equations that will allow us to estimate factors of safety, like it's been mentioned in this and previous videos. And we will solve an example exercise that encompasses every aspect of fastener calculations we've studied so far. Thanks for watching.